Well, with us now to look at how families who are struggling can plan for the next couple of months is the economics commentator and founder of the investment platform regionally, Justin Urquhart Stewart, who's a regular on the show and got a cat on him. <laughs> oh. Good morning. <laughs> You're right there, Justin. Me, me. Meet Betty. Unfortunately, every time the, the camera goes on, she immediately appears. Oh. All right. Well, that's great stuff. We've got a little surprise for our viewers later. I keep going on about a surprise that managed to break its way into the studio <laughs> earlier as well, which caused a bit of a kerfuffle. But anyway, so talk to me about the cost of living, Justin. I mean, it's getting out of control. What can people do over the next couple of months to help remedy it? Yeah. Well, the problem, the first problem you've got, of course, is not just about heating and power, because that's the easy, not hardly easy, but the most obvious one, because the cap comes off, the price of power we're going to have to start budgeting for is double. Actually, what's going to happen, of course, is you're seeing the cost of production of everything has gone up, because uh, the power has to be used to make stuff, and all that stuff will go up. And, of course, making that stuff goes up, so do wage rises. And so you start getting this inflationary spiral. And we haven't really seen this in this country really for about, you have to go back to the 70s when this was really bad and you got to the period um, of stagflation, as it was called, a stagnating economy with inflation, although some people got it confused with an inflatable deer, which is not. Um, and the whole point was, therefore, how do you actually try and break that cycle? It's very difficult once inflation gets embedded to actually get it out of the system without causing pain in terms of uh, actual uh, things like pay rise being uh, held back and things like that. But the short-term issues for people is they're going to have to start budgeting very, very carefully, uh, not just for their power and fuel, but also for food as well. Um, and gone are the days when you say, well, just shop around a bit more. I'm afraid everybody's putting their prices up at the moment because everyone wants to be part of the herd. They won't, don't want to be seen as the, the last company putting up prices, the ones who get, uh, get the, the nasty message on the front page of the newspaper. so easy for the government to do something about the cost of living crisis that's something that's going to be benefiting millions of people if something was done about it why aren't they well the thing is what you have to try and structure this in a way that encourages people and doesn't actually make sure you get that one word that runs an economy confidence so you have to have confidence that actually the economy is going to grow i'm going to have a job and my pay is going to grow commensally with it and that's the problem at the moment now the good news is actually of course we are setting up a lot of new companies, despite what's happened over the past two years. The good news is we've actually got an awful lot of jobs going. It's just that none of them are particularly attractive at the moment. So what the government has to try and do is encourage more investment into those growth areas. And that's primarily things like technology, the small technology hubs and things like that. Because after all, the biggest employer in this country by sector are not the sort of big uh, insurance companies and banks and things like that. It's smaller companies. We are a nation of, as Napoleon referred to us rather rudely, a nation of shopkeepers. Well, there may not be shops anymore, but certainly small businesses. So government can encourage that. What they have to also do is make sure that the taxation is fair um, and that old phrase, those with the broadest shoulders can have, well, probably more cats on them, but actually can actually bear more tax. So putting national insurance up isn't very fair, actually. Um, what it ends up is actually quite often the weaker people having to pay for it. What you should do is have a much more reformed taxation system, because um, income tax and national insurance are roughly the same, um, and actually then link it according to, much more according to overall, not just income, but I'm afraid a percentage of wealth as well. That's probably the way to go about it. But that's not going to happen in two or three months. And of course, this is a medium term strategy. And of course, governments don't think medium term. Some would say they don't think at all. But in this particular moment, they probably can't think more than a week ahead because they're waiting for the next uh, announcement to come out. So it's very difficult for a politician. But what they need to do, though, is make sure that it's a fair issue so that people can actually start budgeting properly and give them some flexibility. Just handing money out to people will only be a short-term salve, short-term popular issue, yes. but one the, the country can't afford.